Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to Rex Engine. In this tutorial, I wanted to show you guys what to do with the Rex Engine as soon as you install it and get you guys started making your own project. So the very first thing we want to do is open up these three Rex Engine tool palettes here. So I'm going to go to Window, Rex Engine, Rex Engine Settings, Rex Engine Level Editor, and Show Rex Palette. And I like to keep these docked in the corner somewhere where they're out of the way but also easily accessible if I need them. So Rex Settings has different settings that pertain to the entire project. So under the player header, we can set how many players there are, and we can slot the prefabs that those players use for gameplay. There are settings for how lives work in your project, uh, how the project uses a score, if the stages have a timer, dialogue settings, and there's debug settings that let us determine if the music is muted or not while we test it in the editor, and whether or not invincibility is enabled in the editor so we can test it without fear of dying. And of course the save button at the bottom which you need to hit to make those options take effect. The Rex level editor has options for the individual rooms in your scene. So there's a setting here where we can slot in the music track that plays in this room. We can check this checkbox to determine if pausing is enabled in the scene. And we have options to create scene loaders or a player spawn point. And the scene loaders will move the player between scenes when they touch them. And finally, the Rex palette window lets us create new objects for our scene with the press of a button. So we can create a new enemy from a template, or a player from a template, or we can add different gimmicks to our scene, like blocks, breakable tiles, conveyor belts, icy terrain, gravity changers, ladders, stairs, moving platforms, etc, etc. If we press any of those buttons, it'll create one of those objects in our scene. So now that I've shown you guys those three windows, let's test out the Booster's Adventure demo really quick. This is a full-length demo that takes us through one level that shows us a bunch of cool stuff we can do with Rex Engine. And all of those files are here for you guys to look at. It'll show you how to do a lot of stuff. You can find them all under Rex Engine, Scenes, and all of the demo scenes are here in this folder. But let's start with the demo title scene. So if we hit play, it'll take us to the Booster's Adventure title. And that'll load us into the scene for the demo, where we can test all of this stuff out straight out of the box without having to do any adjustments. But of course, the really exciting thing is making our own stuff. So let's make a new scene. So I'm going to go to File, New Scene. And under the Rex Level Editor window, I'm going to hit the Setup Level Scene button, and this is going to automatically add everything to the scene that we need for it to play with Rex Engine. So we'll hit the Play button and test out what this gave us. We can see the player loaded in right where the player's spawn point was. We can move that and drag it around. This is the spawn point they load in from if you hit Play in the editor in the scene. Um, but if players move between rooms, then they load in where the doorway was, which I'll show you guys in a minute. So the first thing now is we want to set up our own player. Right now this is loading in the player from the demo. And so under the Rex palette window, I'm going to go to Create from Template, Player. And this is going to give us a fresh template for a new player where we can edit anything we want to. So I'm just going to save this prefab somewhere. Um, I'm going to save this under Quick Start. And I'm going to set this to be the player that the game uses. So if you recall, under the Rex Settings panel, there's the slot here where we can put in the player prefab. I'm just going to drag our new player prefab onto that slot. Um, let me make sure that worked. Hit the save button. And now when we test the scene, we should see that our new player is the one getting loaded in. Which, of course, he looks the same as the old one. 
but we'll start modifying him now. So if we click on the player, we can see this game object has a lot of stuff on it. And this is sort of the basic template for anatomy of a Rex Engine character. Um, so they've got really standard stuff like a box collider, an audio source, an animator so we can change the way they look. Rex input is pulling your keyboard or your controller for input. Rex physics, um, Rex Engine uses its own completely custom physics engine which is based on not so much realistic physics, but on very precise classic 2D gaming physics, like stuff you would find in NES or Super NES games. And Rex Actor is the basic building block for a character in Rex Engine, whether it's a player or an enemy. And they have tons of settings for how that character works and how it interacts in the world. So moving into the player object, we have this controllers thing here. Now a controller, a Rex controller, is basically um, a set of abilities for how this Rex actor works in the world. Um, so we can see if we click on the controller, they've got a Rex controller script, and they have all of these things, uh, moving state, jump state, knockback state, crouch state, bounce state, and landing state. And all of these states are different abilities they have. So they've got the ability to move, and they've got all of these settings here for their movement speed, uh, whether they accelerate or decelerate, like think Mario Bros. style movement, whether you can make them run if you hold the run button, button down, um, if they can move vertically, which is uh, if you can press up and down to move them up and down. And they've got all these jumping options and all of these options for different abilities. And if we want to add more abilities, on the Rex controller component, there's this add Rex state button. And we can click that and we'll see it pops up a menu here, which has all of these different things we can give them. Um, or we can also access that from tools, Rex engine, add ability. So for starters, let's play with the way this character moves. So by default, we can see they move um, very digitally. Like there's no acceleration, there's no momentum. It's more of a, a Mega Man feeling. So let's make this feel a little bit more like Mario. So I'm going to add in a little bit of acceleration and a little bit of deceleration. And if we hit play now, we should see them having some momentum. and it takes them a little bit of time to come to a full stop. So I don't want to get too into these settings here. Um, I'm just going to show you one more really quickly. Under the jump settings, let's give this guy a double jump. So I'm just going to set multiple jump number here to two. And we should now see we can double jump. So we just built ourselves a double jumping Mario, oh my god. Um, so <laughs> there's all these different settings here and there's all these additional abilities you can add. And we have other videos that go more in depth on this. But in the meantime, let's keep going through different game objects this player has under it. Um, so it's got, underneath controllers, it's got its sprite, where we can change the sprite renderer. So again, um, we'll change that in conjunction with the animator here on the top level to change the way the player looks. It's got a game object here where it stores different attacks. So it's got a melee and a projectile attack by default. And energy is where it stores its health. And if it uses magic points or weapon energy or anything like that, that goes under here as well. Um, and for any of those things, you can also slot in prefabs for the energy bar which is how it displays that energy, if at all. So we've got our player, and let's test out really quick to see if he's got attacks on him. So yeah, he's got this wrench slash, and he's got this uh, pea shooter thing right there, definitely Mega Man inspired. Um, so let's add in an enemy as well. So he's got something to test those attacks on. So under uh, the Rex palette window, I'm just going to make a new enemy from the template. And if I click that, this enemy automatically appears on the stage. 
And by default, this enemy is just going to sit there. Like, he doesn't really have anything enabled immediately. So we smash that dude in the face a couple times, and he dies. So the enemy, um, his, his anatomy is the same as the player's. He's got all of the same components. If we drill down there, he's got a controller where his abilities go. We can give him all the same abilities the player has. And so let's test that out really quickly. Um, let's click on add rex state underneath his rex controller. And let's give him a jumping ability. So that added this jumping component. And to make him use it, uh, since there's no controller, or no, I mean like no input, no keyboard or gamepad for the enemy, he has an enemy AI component. And this will let you program your enemy to do a bunch of stuff. Um, so let's click the will auto jump at intervals option, which is just going to make this guy jump um, every X number of frames. So right now he's set to jump every 256 frames. So let's hit play and try that out. And so we can see every 256 frames on the dot, this dude is jumping. Now we can do that across the board for all sorts of abilities. There's tons of options here in the enemy AI script. And we can give him attacks, melee attacks, projectile attacks. We can let him hurt people by bouncing on them. They can climb ladders. Basically, everything the player can do, enemies can do. And you set them up mostly in the same way, except you use this enemy AI script to tell them when to do things, rather than a player controlling them. So we'll go over this in another video. Um, lots more options here, though. Uh, so now let's add some new things to our scene. We've got the player, we've got an enemy. Let's go into Rex Palette, and let's add some blocks. So if I click on the block button, that adds this block to the stage, and I can drag that around. Put that wherever I want. And let's add a conveyor belt. Why not? So conveyor belts move us in the direction the conveyor belt's moving in. We've created some really, really bad physics for our player. It's great. This, uh, this double jump plus slashing attack plus momentum thing really doesn't work. Um, so all of these options are available here, though. And of course, if you're so inclined, you can also save your own prefabs in the library and drag those out instead. So I'm going to get rid of this enemy here, just so we're not running into this dude all the time. And I'm going to save this scene. And now let's make a second scene to move the player into. So I'm going to delete the player from the stage because they'll be loaded in automatically um, in accordance to what we set here in the Rex settings panel for the player prefab. Um, so let me save that again, and let's make a second scene. So we'll go to Rex Level Editor, Set Up Level Scene. That gives us our second scene. Um, and I'll keep this one empty for now. I'll just hit the Save button again. Save that as 02. And let me make sure to add those to the build settings as well. There we go, so those are both in the build settings, so when we load between them, um, it'll Unity will know about both of them. So now to connect these two scenes, 
Um, I want to go to Rex Level Editor, Create Scene Loader. So a scene loader is an object where you touch it and it acts as a doorway into another scene. So Create Scene Loader Right will make one on the right edge of my scene. And I'll drag this guy down. Um, we can see this little red dotted line here, which is where we can touch that. Um, so this thing, the scene loader here, has a bunch of options. It'll tell us where it's loading us to. Um, the identifier is a unique ID for every scene loader so that it, it knows where to load you into in the next scene. Um, so the name of the scene, level to load, I want to load this into our O2 scene. And I want to load this into a scene loader that is marked A. So if we go to uh, O2 now, I'm going to create a scene loader on the left side of the screen. So this is the corresponding doorway, basically. And so the ID has to be A. So if you recall, we were loading into A, so that'll work. This will load us back into O1. And there we go. Um, so the one last thing I want to do here is these white lines surrounding a scene are the scene boundaries. And those constrain the camera and the player movement. So if anything runs into those, they act as solid walls, basically. So I'm going to click on this left one here. And I just want to make sure this is not solid. So this way, that means the player can pass through it to touch the scene loader and load into the new scene. And I'll do the same thing on this one, make sure it's not solid. OK, so now we should be able to load between these scenes. OK, so we, we successfully moved from scene one to scene two, but something was wrong when moving back. So we've got a scene loader. Um, so the problem was we had this set to uh, scene load type was entrance only, which basically means you can load into it but not back out. So I'm going to change that to exit and entrance. And that will let us load into and out of that scene loader. And I'm going to make sure this other one is the same way. OK, so that one's good. So let's try that one more time. Awesome. So we've got a working scene loader moving us between scenes. And you can use this to stitch together entire levels out of different rooms. So for example, if we go into the Boosters Adventure demo scenes, we can see these are all using the building blocks that we just put together. So these all have scene boundaries and scene loaders. This one goes to demo two. And everything here, um, all of the enemies, all of the components, the gimmicks, the power-ups, all of those things are available here in the Rex palette. So there's lots more stuff to cover, which we'll do in other videos. But for the time being, I hope that helped you guys get started with your project. And I'll have plenty more for you guys soon.